Hey guys, so it is time for another edition of AIP Confessions. So, I started AIP on January 1st. I made it my whole 30 days. I started my intros uh, in February. I did pretty good. And then I've kind of been like eating stuff and re not doing a true reintro, but like not going crazy either. Foods that I found that I tolerate fine, chocolate. It actually helps a ton with my digestion. Probably the magnesium, but I can't find a, seem to find a magnesium supplement that has the same effects. I only have the opposite effect of what I'm going for. Um, TMI, I know. But um, because I'm still kind of sticking with it and realizing I feel really great on it, um, and doing a AIP FODMAP like infusion, that's kind of where I'm at right now. Um, I said I was still having some digestive issues that I couldn't, I haven't gotten rid of. I'm still dealing with them. Um, so AIP is the removal of foods that affect autoimmune nightshades, eggs, dairy, etc. Paleo AIP is what it is. So basically it's paleo with an intensified version of an autoimmune protocol. Um, but on top of that, I, um, I've been eating a lot of high histamine foods, um, which FODMAPs or a low FODMAPs diet removes high histamine foods. So what I have been doing is when I reintro an AIP food and I tolerate it well, I remove a food that is high histamine. Um, but what I'm finding is when I'm eating stuff over and over again, cough, cough, tomatoes, um, I'm thinking that I'm kind of having an issue with them. So I'm thinking um, of kind of going back AIP and maybe removing those high histamine foods as I do it and then seeing how I feel. It's really hard because high histamine foods and AIP basically eliminate like 95% of the things that you can eat. Um, so it's gonna be kind of intense for me over the next couple weeks. I'm probably thinking that I'll really like start next week um, with some meal prep. But um, in the meantime, I got something super excited. So Mickey Trescott, who is one of like the super duper people in the AIP community, Nikki Trescott is also an NTP. So she's a nutritional therapist like me and she wrote another cookbook. So here it is. This is the Nutrient Dense Kitchen. All of the things are for AIP protocol. So if this is a practical guide to nutritional density and autoimmune protocol. So I, 125 autoimmune paleo recipes for deep healing and bright, vibrant health. Oh my gosh, this cookbook is just beautiful. Every page just makes me wanna kiss it. Um, there are some interesting things in here that I'm like, I don't think I'm gonna have. There's like a beef liver thing that looks like beef liver pudding. I'll take my beef liver in a supplement form. Um, but there is a bison shepherd's pie that looks beautiful and gorgeous that I'm going to make. Um, here's a marinated steak and veggie. I'll show you this picture. Like, look at that. Sign me up. So, um, it's a smoky Brussels sprout hash with shallots. Um, Brussels sprouts are high histamine. I haven't quite eliminated them yet because, you know, it's like one of the five things I eat all the time. Um, but... Ooh, a maple vanilla chai. So like, as I flip through the pages, there are just more and more things that I think are just absolutely sound delicious and totally awesome. Um, I am gonna keep coffee. I seem to be doing well with it. So I'm not gonna go full on AIP, but you guys will see some like reintroductions and some different stuff. Um, I'll probably be cooking a lot from this cookbook. I'm also doing some recipe testing for a project that I have coming up. It, when I know more and I will share more. Um, but you guys always wonder like what I'm cooking and what I'm doing. Um, I do use a lot of cookbooks. I love cookbooks. Um, as someone who doesn't always follow a recipe, <laughs> I have a thing for cookbooks. It's just funny. I like them because I use like to use them for inspiration and different ideas. Um, because sometimes it's nice to like have someone tell you a plan, but I'm also very comfortable with like taking something that's in a cookbook um, for example, this recipe, I'm looking at carnitas lettuce boat tacos. So basically, taco in lettuce. Boom. Because everyone wonders what you do when you don't eat a shell. Well, you can either eat it on a salad or you can eat it in a lettuce wrap. Ta-da! Um, but this is uh, pork shoulder, salt, bone broth, lime juice, garlic powder, oregano. Um, garlic powder is a, high, garlic is a high FODMAP food. Also another one that I haven't removed probably should. I put it in everything. Um, and then it has avocados and onion, red onion, radishes, cilantro, horseradish. So um, 
like if I was doing like if I had removed all these things that I should for high fat maps, I would remove the onions and the avocados. Um, so what would be some options that I could top with it instead? Um, I would be kind of playing with those and getting a little creative. Um, I seem to be doing well with peppers, so maybe I would add peppers. They're not necessarily AIP. So kind of playing with that. Um, just because a recipe says one thing doesn't mean you can't do another. Um, a lot of times I find people like, I don't have a red pepper but they have a green or a yellow, just replace it. Like, don't get so caught in the recipe that you don't know what to do. Um, that's kind of where I'm at for AIP right now. I'm like kind of, I guess I'm kind of disappointed that I didn't get everything that I wanted from it, and that's kind of why I'm making the change. But um, that's the thing about um, food protocols. You need to stick with them for at least 30 days, if not longer, to know if it's right for you. Um, I know that a ton of my symptoms went away. Um, a lot of brain fog, a lot of bloating, a lot of other like digestive things. I just ha can't, like there's like two things that I just cannot get to go away no matter what I do. And I literally have tried a million things. So if any of my NTP friends are watching this and you guys are like, well, what are your symptoms? What's going on? What are you taking? Let me know. I will tell you what they are and I will let you try and come up with some different thing. Maybe a supplement you think I could try. I like. I have never in my life been so religious about taking my supplements. And if you do not follow me on Instagram, I did an awesome post today about it. I'll see if I can share my Instagram post onto Facebook so you guys can read it. It's really about my, like, my belief in supplementation, and I'm going to talk about it. But I think a post would be beneficial too. So um, I never used to take supplements. Like I was 100% a terrible supplement taker. I should take this because I'm deficient. I should take this because of this. And I should take B vitamins because I've been on birth control forever. And my B vitamins are depleted. And my zinc probably is. Okay. Up until I became a nutritional therapist, I was like, I don't need supplements. I can just eat my food. Like, I eat healthy. I eat vegetables. I'm going to get these nutrients. Like, it'll be fine. Okay. Here's the thing. When you are doing something to your body, for example, taking birth control. And I, if birth control is the right choice for you, like, go for it. It's your thing. Like you have the right to your own body, period. I 100% believe that because no one should mandate, mandate us to take birth control. Like just like other stuff, they shouldn't be mandating our health. So if you are taking birth control, for example, like I was continuously to deal with my endometriosis, my symptoms, in case you didn't know, endometri my symptoms are just masked by birth control. They don't make them go away. So instead of like actually dealing with my stuff and knowing that things can make it worse, dairy, gluten, those are inflammatory. And um, because um, endometriosis is an immune disorder, it's inflammatory to your immune system and to your body. Um, I was still eating foods that were like causing problems, but it was okay because I didn't have terrible, I didn't have periods. So I didn't know they were terrible and it wasn't affecting me. Um, now that I'm not on birth control, I can specifically tell if I've had those things because like it will be the most, the most terrible period I've ever had. So um, the thing is when you take birth control and other other prescription medications are the same. They deplete nutrients. So when you take birth control, it a lot of times depletes B vitamins. That's why a lot of times when women are on birth control, they deal with like depression and anxiety and other stuff. It's because all those happy, feel-good Bs are being used. And then it depletes zinc. So it causes a lot of digestion issues, either constipation or for some people diarrhea, but in more commonly constipation with your period. So um, those are just some a few things to think about when you're thinking about like birth control and nutrients. So if you are on taking birth control continuously or just birth control in general, I highly recommend um, taking a um, taking a prenatal or at least finding some supplementation that supports those things. If you don't know what that is, working with a nutritional therapist like me, that is what I do, uh, is finding the supplements that actually work for you. So I don't just shoot at the dark and say, oh, you should take this, this, and this. Every supplement that I'm currently taking is one that I have been tested for and I know my body responds well to. So what led me to it is finding out that I was doing all of these things for my body, but my body still wasn't healing and wasn't feeling good. Sometimes supplementation isn't about like, I eat all the right things, I'm doing all the right things, that should be enough, my body's revolting against me. No, your body doesn't revolt against you, your body is fighting for you. It's telling you, I don't feel good, help me. And instead of listening to it and doing something about it, we're like, why are you so angry with me, body? I'm doing all these things. Your body just needs some extra love. And extra love can be supplementation, extra love could be meditation, extra love could be a sauna session, it could be a workout. Like. It could be different for every single person, but for me, it involves a supplement routine. And as hard as it was for me to grasp that I needed to take these supplements, 
it really has made so many things better for me. And of course, like my diet has been very, very strong. No gluten, no dairy, no exceptions. Like that's like I drew a hard line in the sand and I said, I can't do this anymore because of how it makes me feel. And I live on that side now. Like it's all the time I have to say no. Maybe in a few years when I move forward and my healing, I'm, I'm further along in my healing, those can come back. But like it's okay to draw a hard line in the sand and know like, those foods aren't worth it. Like, and it's okay to have foods that are worth it. Like, okay, dairy sometimes is worth it. I had a gluten-free pizza and I felt, I paid for it the whole rest of the weekend for having dairy and understanding like, it's okay to have those things if you're really enjoying them. But like the second the joy interferes with so much of your life is the second it's really not worth it. And I then, I had that. And then not too long after that, I got my period. And it was a very, very horrible period for me. And that isn't worth it for me because a horrible period is days of me feeling terrible. It's not just like one day or a couple hours I feel kind of crampy. and ter- No, like it's like I want to lay on the floor and kind of curl up in a little ball and cry because my like guts hurt. Like all of it hurts. So like I completely understand that kind of pain and I believe what we eat impacts that, but also there's ways to support that to move forward and heal our body faster. So food can heal your body, but sometimes it takes a little longer because it's not like you just did this overnight. It's kind of like weight loss. Like you, you want to lose 10 pounds in five days. And I'm like, but how long did it take you to gain 10 pounds? Like you didn't gain 10 pounds overnight. You can't lose it overnight either. Like, so it's going to take time and it's going to take years. I was on continuous birth control for like more than a decade. So like, why would I think in a few years I would heal everything I have going on when for 10 year, 10 plus years of using birth control, I was telling my body something else. I have to regain those connections. So what it does, what birth control does, it stops the connection of your ovaries from communing with your like other channels in your body. So like your hormones aren't like perceiving any connection and the hormones that you're taking on birth control aren't real hormones. So your body isn't communicating with itself. It doesn't know what to do and it doesn't know what to think. And then you stop and your body's like, WTF, what did you do? So like give your body some time Like that could be any prescription medicine. It could be an antibiotic, like so many things. Give your body some time and give your body some love and what that body, what that love is for your body and my body are going to be very, very different. It's part of the reason I showed my supplements, but I didn't tell you what I was taking. Um, I mean, one, when I take a liquid vitamin D, which sunshine is just, I mean, it's showing up in Minnesota, but I'm not getting enough of it. So I'm taking some vitamin D to support myself. So I just want you guys to think about like, your body's unique and what does your body need to be supported? Um, and that's going to be different from person to person based on your diet, your lifestyle, and so many other little factors. That's why individualized nutrition coaching is like what I 100% believe in. Like, I don't think keto is perfect for anyone. I don't think there's any diet that's perfect for any, like everyone. And I think as your body evolves and as you change and you grow, what you should be eating and what works for you and what doesn't changes. Um, if you notice that you're eating a lot of something and you're having issues, like maybe that food is too much or there's a quantity that's appropriate for you. So playing with your nutrition is 100% acceptable and 100% what I encourage. So that is all I'm going to rant on tonight. So if you guys just hopped on and you miss anything, take a look. I did talk about a new cookbook I got, um, some of my AIP confessions and where I'm doing um, and I'm how I'm guiltily eating all the chocolate. Um, okay, just one square of dark chocolate, 95% every night, like clockwork. It's about chocolate time too. All right, guys, you have a great night. If you need anything, you know where to find me. See you later.